First of all, I'm really excited to hear all the people that are getting into speaker building. It's a really great hobby. I absolutely love it. And I'm hoping that you guys are enjoying it too. But with the amount of people that are getting into speaker building, I've noticed that there's a lot of questions that keep coming up with, where do I start? And it's a great question because there's not a lot of information about what the best tools to get when you're very first beginning. So let's go ahead and talk about the five best tools to pick up if you want to get into speaker building. And don't worry, some of them are even free. So let's go ahead and talk about the very first thing that I think is absolutely necessary if you want to get into speaker building. Now I think this is great because it teaches you a lot about the speakers that you're going to be testing and that is of course what I think is probably the most important thing for anyone to get is a calibrated microphone. Now realize what I just said. I didn't just say get a microphone, right? I said get a calibrated microphone. There's a big difference between just getting a calibrated microphone like this, which is the mini DSP you make one versus just getting any old microphone. And there's a reason for that. A calibrated microphone is actually calibrated to give you a flat response. So when you're testing your speakers, you're going to see the actual response of the speaker and not see some of the mic's imperfections in it. Typically a calibrated microphone will come with calibration files which you'll use within your testing program to make sure that this does give you a flat frequency response when it's reading it. This is absolutely necessary because it allows you to test each and every one of your drivers for frequency response and it also allows you to test your finished product to make sure that you're not having any issues. This is the mini DSP you make one or you can get some of the other ones like Dayton Audio sells some and there's a, quite a few others that are sold as well. Now any of the links to any of the products I'm going to be talking about will be in the description below for you to go ahead and purchase or at least look at. Now if you're going to use a calibrated microphone which I think everyone needs to especially if you're getting into multi-driver systems you're going to need a program that registers and recognizes the microphone. The great thing about that is the program that I'm going to recommend is absolutely free. That program is Roo. Roo is a very powerful free program and Roo has a lot of great features to it. Some of them include a room response, even equalizing a mini DSP such as an active crossover. So if you don't want to build a passive crossover, you can use an active crossover as long as you have a calibrated microphone and this free program. It also allows you to test each individual driver for frequency response within the box that you have built and it allows you to of course test your final results to see if there's any problem areas that you need to clean up or clear up before you move on. So Roo is absolutely essential if you're going to get into speaker building so go ahead and pick that up. The download link is down below in the description. Now the third thing is a testing software that I found to be very crucial, especially if you want to reuse drivers, although it's important even if you're using brand new ones. And that's this. This is DATS V2, which is Dayton Audio Test System. Now this is their second version of this, and it's very, what it comes with is very basic. It comes with some hardware, which plugs into your USB port on your computer. It's probably important that you realize that everything we've mentioned so far does need a computer, so you are going to need a computer of some kind. Now, it also comes with a little resistor, which helps set that up, and then, of course, it comes with the software. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at the software and show you what it can do. The first thing it can do is it can do a rub and buzz test which tells you if your speaker is good or not. Now you may think, well I don't need that. Well I'll tell you, you probably do and here's the reason why. If you get really into speaker building what's going to happen is you're going to buy drivers that are on sale with every intention of using them right away. And then next thing you know it's six months down the road and you haven't even opened them up yet. So the best thing to do at that point in time is to go ahead and test them when you buy them. That way you know if you have a good driver or not without having to of course build your entire system. Now, it also allows you to test the valuations of capacitors, inductors, and resistors. So if you've ever forgotten a value or can't find the value of it, you can test it. And of course, it gives you your impedance graph. And most importantly, it'll give you your TS specs. The Thiel small parameters, or TS parameters, are what you use to create the perfect box. Without those, it's really hard to create the perfect box. And so, 
you're going to want to have those. So if your speaker doesn't have them, this will give them for you. Or if you have a new speaker, believe it or not, the manufacturer's TS specs are not always correct. So it's good to test those and see if they're off at all. Now the fourth is something that I think everyone actually needs, and that's this. This is a good soldering iron. Now notice I said a good soldering iron and not a cheap soldering iron. You can use a cheap soldering iron, and if you have to, if you're a budget constraint, you can pick one up at Walmart or some type of AutoZone or Advanced Auto Parts or even like a Home Depot for like five or six bucks. Even Parts Express sells them. But I like to get ones with a uh, variable temperature on it. And this one is actually a really, really good one for the value. This is the Xtronic Model 3020. I actually was not really even aware of this, but one of my buddies shared this with me and uh, showed it to me. And I was blown away when I got it. It, it heats up really fast. It solders really well. And if you're looking for a new soldering iron, I, I would recommend this. It's, it's great. I think I picked mine up on Amazon, but you can actually buy it directly from the company as well. But something like this is good. So why do you need a soldering iron, and why do I recommend one with variable temperature? Well, a couple of reasons. First, believe it or not, some of these drivers, the terminals that you're going to be soldering to, can be very fragile, especially on some of the budget tweeters. So something that has a variable temperature will allow you to get it hot, but hopefully not too hot, to damage those tweeters. I've seen that happen before and that is not a fun thing to go through, especially when you're at the very end of your build. I also like a, a good soldering iron because it heats up a lot faster, it saves you a lot of time, and it saves you a lot of hassle. Now to go along with that soldering iron, if you don't have any, I like this. This is Soldering Flux. This I did pick up from Parts Express. It's very, very good and it will really help your soldering. So if you don't know how to use this, go ahead and watch some videos. I'm sure there's a ton of videos online. I'm not going to teach you how to use that right now. The fifth and final thing is free programs. Guys, it is really important to have good free programs. Now, you can pay money for upgraded versions of these, but these are a couple free programs that I think are absolutely necessary for anyone that's getting into speaker building. NIC is a fantastic program. It is a box modeling program. Once you put your driver information in, it will actually auto-calculate different optimal size boxes for you. And of course, you can manipulate that data to fit within the specifications that you want so that you can test it before you actually build it. it. Saves you a lot of time and a lot of hassle. If you don't know how to use that, I put a link in the description below uh, to a series in which I taught that program. Now, there's also a couple other programs that are free, um, XSIM or PCD, which is Passive Crossover Designer, which was created by Jeff Bagby. Both of these are crossover designing softwares. You do need a good crossover designing software, and these both are free, which will allow you to design a crossover, either from the manufacturer's FRD and ZMA files, or from the ones that you've made yourself with your calibrated microphone. All right, guys, now I know I told you that I was going to give you five, and I have, but I'm going to throw one more out there. This is the sixth one. It's a bonus, so consider this a bonus. A Jasper Jig 200. Now, you don't need to get a Jasper Jig, but a Circle Jig in general is something that is, is fantastic to have. You don't have to have it, but it does a lot of great things. It allows you to flush mount your speaker, which does help with um, your your frequency response and your diffraction. So I all always love that because it does allow you to flush mount all of your speakers. And of course, it cuts the perfect hole for you. It saves you a lot of time. Of course, if you're going to get a Jasper jig, then of course you need a router. So keep that in mind. If that's something that you're interested in, that's another tool that I would recommend if you already have some of these other ones. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up, like, and share. It really does help the channel out. Also, if you've been finding these videos helpful and you want to help out in another way, please feel free to visit my Patreon page and see if there's any of those that... and see if there's any tiers that fit your needs. Please feel free to visit my Patreon page and see if there's any way you want to help out that way as well. All right, guys, thanks, and have a great night. Sweet. Counting double-digit thousands.